Wall Street Week Daily segment. The host of Wall Street Week, David Weston, uh, joins us as he does every day around this time. And David, you've been gone the last couple of days, but if you remember that relentless sell-off that we've been seeing yeah. in Treasuries, it's been put on pause just a little bit, obviously because well. of the global conflict here. But I think most people expect that that uptrend in yields that we had seen prior to this week is going to resume. Yeah, something. Safe Haven really yeah. has done something yeah. with the war, hasn't it? It's exactly yeah. right. But as you know so well, Romaine, really where rates are headed over the longer term is probably one of the more important questions that investors really have on their minds. And so we turn now to someone who has become a student of that very question, and I mean really over the really long time, Ken Rogoff. He's Harvard University professor of economics and chair of international economics. So, Ken, thank you so much for being with us. There's something of a debate going on in the economics field right now about whether over the longer term term, there's a tend to have rates go back down, they were so long, low for so long, or whether there are other factors that will drive them up. Where are you? Oh, I'm definitely in the school that they're going to stay high for as far as the eye can see. I mean, you know, whether it be exactly at the, and I'm talking about the real rate first, whether it's going to stay up at the level it is now, I don't know. Uh, it seems to me, you know, a, a level of the 10 year treasury of 1.52 would seem natural, but it's very hard, hard to, to say. That is a way minority view still in academics. A lot of people are very invested in saying, no, this is temporary. It's going to go away after a while. They did all this work on demographics and productivity. But, you know, if you look at the long run on real interest rates, those factors aren't really very powerful. They don't even always go in the right direction. And what is true is when you have a really big drop like we did after the 2008 financial crisis, you ought to expect most of it to go away. There's a slight downward trend long term. But uh, I've been thinking it would go away for a long time. I have to say now that it's happened, I don't know if I was prescient or a broken clock right twice a day. But uh, it seems to me the, the fundamentals really point to having higher interest rates for a long time. Now, going up still really depends on anchoring inflation expectations. Real rates are pretty high now. Ken, unpack some of those fundamentals, if you would, please, because one of the things that we hear from some people are it's going to be, in part, the demand for spending and investment of things like geopolitics, where we're seeing that right now in Israel. Before that, we saw it in Ukraine. Also, some investment when it comes to China. And beyond that, there's the move to climate change, which is going to require a lot of money. Is that part of what, over the longer term, is likely to drive up those rates? Because there's so much of a demand for borrowing. No. Two of the big factors, for sure, is a belated recognition that you can't keep cutting money on defense forever. And I'm not just talking about the United States, but uh, Europe. And I think defense spending is going to come up 1% to 2% in both the United States and Europe. If the United States has to uh, you know, have conflagrations on two or three fronts or be prepared for that, we're uh, unfortunately need to do more. Would, you know, It's nice if we didn't. And Europe is way underinvested in defense. Japan, China spending more. That's a factor. And then, David, you mentioned the green transition <laughs> isn't really happening very fast. But I think if you look out a ways, uh, it's going to involve a lot of big investments, a lot of changes. But I think there are other factors. There's populism, certainly. There's a lot more redistribution of income, uh, concern about uh, uh, just the uncertainty from the, um, n not just the, the geopolitics creating this uncertainty and splitting up the world. Globalization brought rates down. There's no doubt about it. I mean, Bernanke might have overstated it with the global savings glut, but there was something to it. And now that's, that's in retreat, if, if only because China is slowing so much. So I think there are a lot of fundamentals pointing to higher real rates. Yeah. As for you know inflation expectations, uh, the Fed's trying to anchor them, but you know it still has a fight ahead. I'm curious though, when you look at kind of that that what most people see right now as that secular shift, Ken, uh, in the rate environment here, and you think back to sort of I guess what led us to almost a zero bound rate environment for so many years here, what actually becomes the catalyst that, if at all, would arrest this upward trend? Well, I mean, eventually they start feeding back into the real economy and you start, you know, having an effect on investment The and, and gets uh, the uh, inter real interest rate gets higher enough that starts cutting back investment. You have an effect on, on saving. But uh, 
I have to say, you know, what we know about bond markets, sort of a lot of research over the last 10, 10 or 20 years is some there's not there's a lot of bonds outstanding, but the actual trades is small relative to the number of bonds. And so the rates can be very volatile in the short run and you have to be wary of that. But I, I just think the you know, fundamentals just have us in a different world. We, we had really low rates in, in other periods. If uh, my work uh, with my colleagues, Paul Schmelzing and Barbara Rossi, it goes over 700 years. But even just in the last couple hundred years, there have been periods when rates have been real high, periods yeah. when rates have been real row, low. And it goes away or back to, say, a gentle declining trend. But it, it, the kind of changes we saw after the financial crisis, nobody should have thought that was sec, you know, going to be permanent, the secular stagnation, as my esteemed colleague Larry Summers called it. Well, when you look at where rates are now, I mean, let's just take a baseline, you know, 5% or so on some of the benchmark uh, yields here in the U.S. here. We're not talking, at least on a historical basis, a huge elevation here. I know the rate of change spooked a lot of people. But can a market, whether it's the bond market or the equity market, and the economy for that matter, live with the 5% baseline? Well, I mean, I think that's exactly the point. I mean, and why investors are realizing that this might be real. The interest rates have gone up and, yeah, maybe we'll hit a recession at some point, but the economy hasn't fallen apart as much as you would think. Obviously, there are risks of a financial accident ahead when you raise rates this much. I don't know where it will be. But it hasn't happened as quickly or dramatically as people thought. And I think that's because the economy is adjusting to a higher rate. And if I can add, you know, people think the Fed has raised rates so high. Well, relative to zero being normal for the real interest rate or minus, you know, one or two percent for the very short term real interest rate. But if we live in a world of more normal interest rates, they didn't raise them as much as people thought. 